if we go to Ephesians chapter 5, and let us start from verse 22. It says, uh, Wives, uh, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is a head to the wife of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and it cleanse her with the washing of, the, of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of the body of his flesh and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Hallelujah. Now, there are a couple of things here I want to uh, highlight. Challenges may arise here and there, but the best place for you to get your inspiration, get your courage, get your strength, get your wisdom, is to look at the relationship between Christ and the church. Because marriage in itself is not an end in itself. It is just a pointer to something greater, which is a relationship between God and man. So always remember that. So at any particular time, where, when you need to be encouraged, you need to be strengthened, you need wisdom how to proceed, how to move forward, just look at Christ and the church. Now, on that note, there are two parts. There is the part that Christ plays in a, this marriage with the church, and there is also a part that the church plays in this marriage with Christ. So the part that Christ plays uh, involves you, uh, Nathan, and the part that the church plays involves you, Estherina. So I'm going to highlight a few things. If you take them into consideration, then they should, be, um, should help you and ensure that you attain the dream that you share together. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, Nathan, uh, Christ. First of all, Christ is a king. And therefore, we expect you to be a king in the house. So you are the king. Now, when you read the Bible, like you read in First Samuel chapter 8, verse 20 to 21, you will find that uh, the role of a king is defined. The role of a king uh, is threefold. One, the king is a judge. A judge. Two, a king is a shepherd. And three, the king is the protector. And those are the three roles you're going to play in this uh, life you're starting together. Now, what does it mean to be a judge? To be a judge, it doesn't mean that you're going to judge your wife. <laughs> to be a judge, it means you make a decision. Now, the best story I can give you is the story of Solomon. Solomon had wisdom to make judgment. If you remember the two ladies who were fighting over a child... How did he handle it? He, he judged between the two and he made the right call, the right decision. So we expect you as the head of the family to take your position and to be uh, wise in terms of allowing the spirit of God and the word of God to help you to make the right decision whenever the occasion arises. Don't, don't trust your own thinking. Uh, now I know uh, in a modern society, we, we think maybe uh, there is no God or God is nothing or has no place in our lives, which is okay. Everybody can think uh, in whichever way or form he wants. But I can assure you, uh, to, there is nothing that will come across that has not been addressed in the Bible. Absolutely nothing. 
Every single thing is there. And it is the role of the Holy Spirit to show you and to, to, what, to, 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 to reveal to you that wisdom which is needed at that particular time. So, as a king, I expect you always to make decisions based on the word of God and the spirit of God. And thereby, it will be a wise decision. You will be able to raise your family. You will be able to achieve or lead the family to achieve those dreams which you have agreed uh, uh, upon this journey. Now, that of uh, the role of a king as a judge. Now, if we go to point number two, that you are the shepherd. You know that Jesus Christ was a shepherd. Again, you shepherd the family based on what the Holy Spirit guides you and based on the word of God. You see, God is our provider. As long as your trust and your confidence is in him, you will always prosper. Your family will always prosper. Your wife will always be happy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there are times will come where there will be challenges. Now, I know we, we, have, we are from different backgrounds, but I think uh, for those who have been in marriage, they will attest there are times where challenges arise, especially the biggest area of contention is in the area of finance. If you can put up a smile, I'll appreciate it. Always there is a fight, not most of the marriages, in the area of finance. Either misuse, either by the husband or by the wife. Money is not enough. When money is enough, then someone is not uh, responsible anymore in the house. They are always out there somewhere, somewhere, somewhere because there is a lot of money and they are trying to finish that money. Or when money is in scarcity, then there is a fight. Huh? Am I lying? Huh? In fact, statistics shows that uh, 70% of problems in the families is caused by finances. It's the place where it's, it's the source of biggest contention in the family. And that's where you need God as your provider. That's where you need your shepherd. That's where you need to take your place as a shepherd and receive wisdom, download wisdom from the throne of God to steer you and to guide you in such times. Uh, and the best way, uh, if you read in uh, Psalms 35 verse 27, it says, The Lord takes pleasure in the prosperity of his people. Contrary to what people have been told, in fact, to be poor, it is evil. Should I repeat again? To be poor, it is evil. In fact, to be poor is sin. And unfortunately, sometimes we are taught that if you are poor, <laughs> then you will be holy. Trust me, if poverty causes you to be holy, then the most holy people will be in India. Isn't it? But it is not. You see, as you read your Bible, you will find that Jesus Christ who came and died for humanity, he paid the price for sin, but also he paid the price for poverty. Showing you that poverty is absolutely evil. Everyone here, you want to give your children the best education they can ever have. You want to give them a life that they could ever have. But if you don't have money, don't fool yourself. You cannot. And for those born-again Christians like me, they think that uh, it doesn't matter. I'll speak in tongues. And, no, it, it doesn't work that way. You need money. Huh? You need money. You see Dr. Nathan there and Serena there. They, and they look nice. Money was used to make them reach that stage. So if you can clap for their parents, please, once again. So I know, Nathan and Serena, you, you have learned a bit from your parents and you will continue to learn. But let the word of God and the spirit of God be your anchor as you guide and steer your family into wealth. In fact, the Bible says, a good man leaves behind inheritance for his children, children, meaning that your grandchildren, they must find enough wealth for them to begin life. What is destroying African families is when our parents sometimes they die, instead of us receiving something, we receive debts. I know you may disagree, but it's okay. You see, if they had left behind for us something to start over, because you see, my stepping stone should be their shoulder. Is that right? Then life will be much easier. But it's, it's like every African family will all have to start from scratch. And that is not right. I remember my father used to, um, to tell me when I was young, uh, study hard, 
don't expect to get anything from me. When I die, I'm going to write everything to the church. So I started hating the church. Because they were competing with me. <laughs> you see, Adi told me that I'm going to leave you super abundant wealth. Now you need to be serious with your education. Prepare yourself well because you have wealth to manage. That would have been a different story. But nobody prepared me for that. So I believe I'm giving you this word at this beginning of your journey that you may think that you owe to your ch grandchildren to leave something for them. That is after you've left something for your children. And that role is your role, my friend. Are we together? And then we go to the last point. As a king, your role is to be a protector of your family. The Bible says Jesus Christ loved us to the point of death. He gave himself for the church. So I expect you to give yourself to Esterine. There are times will come you will have to compromise. I know you are a man, you are strong. I know. Sometimes as a king, the best way is to keep quiet. Yeah, it doesn't hurt. You just keep quiet. Huh? Or you go to another room. Huh? You don't have to escalate the situation simply because you want to assert your authority, your position as the head of the family. Sometimes you just keep quiet. Um, now, I know sometimes you may keep quiet and you'll even upset her more, but it's okay. <laughs> it's better you keep quiet rather than you try to assert your, your position and then you escalate the situation. But you always remember you are the protector of the family. And it's a, it's a funny thing. Um, I've been in marriage now not so many years, just a few years. Um, I think, uh, let me try to see. I think this is the 21st, 21st or 22nd year of our marriage. Uh, so I, I know a few things here and there. Not much, but here and there. Sometimes certain decisions you will make, they will not be popular in the family. But make sure you use wisdom. Sometimes you say this, uh -uh, because you are trying to protect your family. You are trying to protect your wife. You are trying to protect your children. You are trying to protect the legacy. You are trying to protect the future that you want to achieve. So always be ready to make such a hard decision. Sometimes it hurts you, but you, you, have, you have to do it. That's your role. That's your position. So... I expect you at some stage after consultation with your wife, then you say, no, this one, uh -uh. we are not going for it. Okay? So now I'm done with you. Let me turn to Estherina. <laughs> As you read the Bible in the book of Genesis, um, chapter 2, uh, when God uh, created man, then he created all the other animals. Then he looked to, to Adam and he said, ah, he's alone. I'll make him, now I know, I'll make him another helper. Now, in Kiswahili, say, nita kutengene, nita tumfanyia msaidizi, anaifanana nae. That is a wrong interpretation of the, or, or translation of the Bible. It is a helper meet, a helper fit, a help msaidizi wakukufa. So, esterina wewe ni msaidizi wakumfa Nathan. Nathan, you are not in the marriage to compete with him. <laughs> you see, you are a helper meet fit to help him to be what to be head of the family does it mean your position is diminished absolutely not okay now as a helper if we read in the bible the best example of someone who is in the position of helping is the holy spirit he is our what our helper so you better took a uh, time and you look at the way Holy Spirit has been helping, not only helping Christ, but also helping the church. So you learn a few things from the Holy Spirit. I wish all women who are in marriage could learn from the Holy Spirit. Most of the fightings will stop. Okay. That didn't go over. Huh? You see, if you can spend a few times and look at the way Holy Spirit is doing things, then we'll minimize a lot of commotion in the house, in the families. Now, what is the role of the Holy Spirit? We know the first role of the Holy Spirit is the helper. He's the helper. Now, how does he help? 
it doesn't help us by carrying us uh, carrying our briefcase carrying our water to the bathroom and so on no it's helping us to overcome those challenges and those hurdles that we come across is helping us to achieve those dreams and desires that we have so as the helper I believe and I expect that uh, you will be instrumental in encouraging Nathan. Sometimes he may, you may find him in a position that he has a dream, but maybe he's hesitant to take a step of faith, to, to step out and to do it. Maybe sometimes he will come back, maybe he's a bit discouraged. So your role is to strengthen him. Your role is to speak into his heart and into his ears and to encourage him and say, hey, you can do it. Sometimes all it takes is that just for him to know that you believe in him. The worst thing can happen to a man is when your wife, your woman, looks down on you. It's the worst thing in life. Can I have an amen from men? You see, you, you, you come home, you are excited about this business idea, you are over the moon that I'm going to prosper, then you share with your wife and say, hey, where are you now, my daughter? See? So, for the few times I've met you, I know you are different. <laughs> I know you'll strengthen him. I know, you, I mean, you'll encourage him. Uh, you'll support him. And sometimes you'll even help him to hear from the Lord and give him the word from the Lord. But another role of the Holy Spirit is our comforter. Is our comforter. So I expect you also, in your role as a wife, you'll be a comforter, not only to Nathan, but also to, but also to the family. Sometimes men can be hard. Not always. Sometimes they can be hard because we tend to view things differently from ladies. Hallelujah. So it's your role as the mother in the family to comfort, not only to comfort your husband, but also to comfort the children. There are times maybe situations may arise that may be tough. And it is you who is going to steer that ship to direct it steady so that you weather the storm. Because those things do happen in life. So I will expect you to be a comforter in such times. And in fact, men, we need it. We look tough, but deep down, sometimes we are soft. Huh? I know some would say, no. But it's okay. That's the truth. But another role of the Holy Spirit is the strengthener. So I expect you to learn from the Holy Spirit and sometimes strengthen your partner, strengthen your husband whenever he needs that strength. Now, a strength sometimes can be the word from the Lord. Sometimes it can be through your prayers. Sometimes it can be to be present with him in such times when he needs someone close to him to overcome or to achieve whatever he wants to achieve. So I will expect that one too. But another role that you have to learn from the Holy Spirit is that role of intercessor. You have to intercede for your family. You have to intercede for your husband. Um, I think the Bible says, Mwanamke mpumbavu anafani? Anabomo nyumbake mwenyewe. Now, one of the reasons that most of the marriages fall apart is because sometimes a woman who is in the intercessor. In fact, women can intercede better than men because proper intercession requires feelings and emotions. And some men, they can't express feelings and emotions. Why? I don't know, yeah, but yeah. that's the way it is. Yeah. So yeah. you need to be interceding yeah. for your husband, interceding for the family yeah. regularly. Yeah. Reg not occasionally, <laughs> regularly. Make it part of your life. Yeah. Yeah. That whenever, yeah. like you sense something is not right, maybe you observe your husband, you look at him, maybe he looks down, he looked yeah. 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 he looked maybe lost. Yeah. 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 Then instead yeah. of wagging your finger, yeah. Yeah. maybe yeah. it's time for yeah. you to go to your closet and you intercede for him. You say, Lord, I don't know what is happening with nothing. Or oh, you call him Nati. Eh? I don't know what is happening with Nati, but I know you know him, and I know you know the situation around him. So I'm going to offer myself to the Holy Spirit and intercede for him, yeah, yeah. believing that your yeah, spirit yeah, yeah, is yeah, turning the yeah, situation yeah, and changing yeah, the situation. Yeah, then you yeah, pray in the spirit yeah, at least yeah, one hour. Yeah, yeah, Once yeah, you do yeah, that, yeah, I can assure yeah, you yeah. that whatever that was hanging over, whatever cloud that cloud was hanging over him will be totally gone. Hallelujah. Are we together? Another yeah, role yeah, yeah, of the Holy yeah, Spirit yeah, is that yeah, role of yeah, being yeah. Uh, a counselor. 
is our wonderful counselor. Sometimes women have a way of seeing things uh, different from men. Uh, Holy Spirit also is our standby. So be ready to step in whenever you are needed to step in to achieve or to accomplish whatever is supposed to be accomplished. Sometimes I think the biggest mistake in the marriage is you'll find that sometimes a wife uh, fears to make a decision because she fears that she may get it wrong. Okay? You have the Spirit of God. You have the Word of God. Check with the Spirit of God. Check with the Word of God. If the decision is right, then make a decision. You see, you step in. Sometimes, we, we men, we, we tend to overthink on certain things. You see? But if I get my partner says, no, 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 we go ahead. I, I've checked with the Lord. I've been in prayer. I've looked at the Word of God. I think this is the right way. Then that one, uh -huh, then he can make that decision. So, to sum up, this is a wonderful journey. It's the journey that is full of life, full of blessing, and full of goodness. I don't expect death, sickness, disease, curse, uh, evil, no. And that's why today, as you take your vows, you will not mention those things because they are not part of you. And towards the end, you will seal your vows with the Holy Communion. Showing that indeed, your marriage, your union is patterned after the union between Christ and the church. So, take comfort. Take courage. You have made the right decision, the right choice. Now, let me turn to the parents. Hallelujah. Wakina baba na wakina mama. These two, they are starting their own journey. Please, don't interfere. Please. You had 20-something years to advise them, to counsel them, to guide them, to lead them. Let them now chart their own course. Okay? Sometimes, as parents, we tend to overstep until we overshadow uh, you find like uh, the father or the mother, and it's, it's always funny sometimes, you'll find that the mother is overshadowing the, the husband. Yeah? And, and the father of the, of the wife is always overshadowing the wife. That's not right. Let them, let them chat their own cause. Let them learn. Yes, they will make mistakes. Yes, they will. But trust me, they will turn it around. Don't be quick to intervene. Don't be quick to check. Uh, sometimes say, ah, you see, uh, when, you, when, 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 when my son uh, married you, he was very healthy. Look at him now, it's just bones. Eh? Can't you cook? What's wrong with you? <laughs> eh? huh? Oh, when my daughter got married to you, she was just all light skinned and beautiful. Look at her now. She's just black like a charcoal. Huh? What's wrong with you? What kind of man are you? No, please give them space. Give them time. Trust God. will lead them. will guide them. They have spiritual leaders. They can always refer to. They can ask. If they want your advice, they will come to you. They will ask you. Then you will provide that guide, guidance, that leadership, that, that uh, support that they need. But give them space as much as possible. And the wifis. The wifis and the shemejis. Please, get your own house. Get your own marriage, eh? Yeah, I've seen these things. The wifis. Eh, eh. Huh? You are busy, eh? Day and night discussing the wifi. Hmm, look at her. Since, since our brother got married to her, hmm, he doesn't have time for us. I think I'm a logwa. Your brother is in love. <laughs> you see, few, I think few, few, like what, few, uh, m maybe a month ago, somebody came to me and said, uh, we think our brother is bewitched. What happened? Uh, he doesn't greet us anymore. He doesn't come to family gatherings. I think that woman, uh, that woman, you, please, give them space. I don't say that you should check on them. You should, but don't interfere. Others, you'll be a source of contention. You'll plant funny thoughts 
into their heads things which were not even in their heads or in their hearts bwana yesu asifiwe kwa hayo machache na washukuru kwa kusikiliza kwa kusikiliza kwa kusikiliza kwa kusikiliza